everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, who's going to be doing a wonderful cooking demo all the way from Indiana, I want to tell you that the new book that I have with Len Merzer, it's the third book in the trilogy called Own Your Health. If you buy it by Sunday, October 18th at midnight, an email you receive to Chef AJ Bonus at yahoo.com will send you some amazing bonuses, including the audio files of the book, which is a great listen because it's a really funny book and this way you don't have to buy the Audible, and a lot of bonus recipes that were created by today's guests, including also a bonus recipe by me, the double layer vanilla frosted carrot cake, including an instructional video. We hope to get all the contributors in the book to do demos. A, we, there's 81 original recipes by me and you'll be able to see those every week on Weight Loss Wednesday. I'll put a different one on YouTube, but it'd be fun to have all my friends that contributed recipes. And the contributor today actually knows the author. It's the wife of Glenn Merzer. Her name is Joanna Samoro Merzer and she's gonna be making some delicious recipes, including the kabocha squash soup and a mango lassi. Please Welcome to the show, Joanna. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate you doing this. Hello, everybody. Hello, AJ. Thank you very much for having us here tonight. And I wanted to thank uh, uh, everybody who has time to watch your show tonight. I wanted to thank everybody for joining us. I hope you won't be disappointed. And I have some dishes to share with you. But I have a secret I have to tell you. The secret to the successful cooking is to hire a very good sous chef. And I, it happened, I have a sous chef. So. Glenn Merzer. Hello. Oh my God, you look hilarious, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi AJ. I just want to thank everyone for supporting our book, Own Your Health. Thank you uh, to those who've been posting lovely reviews on Amazon. Um, so I just wanna thank all of AJ's fans and supporters. And if you're still on the fence about buying the book, I think after you see my work today as a sous chef, you'll realize I know what I'm talking about when it comes to food. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow, that's hilarious, Glenn. That's, what a nice surprise. Okay, so I would like to first start with the first dish that will take probably about 40 minutes to be ready. And I, it's that the main dish called one pan of health. And I wanted to show you first, I put in the bowl like this, there is arugula, organic arugula that I buy at our local farmer's market and tradicio chopped. Then the main dish, when the main dish is ready, I don't know if you can see all of it. When the main dish is ready, then the main dish will go in the middle of it. So that's it's just- very, it's, it's already pretty. Thank you. So, you know, arugula and radicios are so full of antioxidants and, um, and they protect the cells from free radicals. So I, we, we eat arugula every day. Um, and according to the studies, uh, in, uh, in arugula, the substances that are called glucosinolates uh, may protect against certain cancers, including breast, prostate, lung, and colon cancers. And, they are, and arugula is rich in vitamin K and fights inflammation. Radicchio, on the other hand, is, uh, is a, so these little dark purplish leaves. Uh, radicchio is also very high in antioxidants and studies show that they are especially es effective in attacking a common liver cancer cell called HEP G2. So now I'm going to go here and I'll show you in this pan, one health pan, I already have in this pot, uh, one cup of rinsed um, brown jasmine rice. Brown jasmine rice will cook a little bit uh, faster than other types of rice. I use all kinds of types of rice. So brown jasmine rice tonight. And uh, what I'm going to use when I prepare these kind of dishes that are like from the macrobiotic cuisine, I use the stove flame. Uh, it's called stove tamer, or sometimes it's called flame de deflector. So I put it directly above the burner. I use the large burner and then the pan is going to sit like this on the top of it. 
So now I'm going to add the water. So for one, one cup of this rice, I need one and three quarter cups of water. I'm going to pour now directly to it. In fact, maybe I should put it first here, closer to, to the um, screen, so I can lift it and show to everybody. I'm going to add my favorite herbs. I love using herbs, the Provence herbs, and they are ground in the mortar. It's one tablespoon of these herbs. And And I'm going to stir it. What's the next thing? And I sometimes use the medicinal mushroom powders, which is optional. Um, I'm going to add one tablespoon. This time I'm going to use the reishi mushrooms. And by the way, if oh. the Glenn has something to tell you, as I will be adding the reishi powder. Yes. Uh, those who uh, take up AJ on the offer of the um of the uh, bonuses, if you get the book by Sunday, there's a PDF file of 25 of Joanna's recipes, and two of the recipes use this reishi powder, but in one of them I typed it wrong and I wrote reiki powder. Reiki is some sort of energy uh, balance uh, <laughs> thing, so it's not reiki powder, it's reishi powder. Yeah, I, I actually, Charles and I get Reiki. Well, we've gotten it for years and you definitely don't want to grind up the Reiki practitioners. That's exactly. for sure. Exactly. Yeah. So now I just stir that the herbs de Provence with the Reishi powder in, uh, in this dish. Um, sometimes I use the lion's mane powder, which gets, get, gives a wonderful flavor to the dish too. I, um, I can show you this one, lion's mane powder. And but that, that is vegan, right? It is vegan, yes. Okay, so now I will be adding to this dish vegetables in layers. So first, I'm going to put the red onions, four slices. You can see closely here, they are prepared. And I'm going to put them, arrange them in the pot, in the pan. Okay. The next one. Joanna, people are asking what kind of pan you put the rice in. It's very nice. Oh, um, well, I have these different pans. Uh, it's the, uh, it's from Cuisine Art and it has the glass top, the glass lid. I, I like to use the glass lid because then I can see through. Uh, I'll tell you when I start cooking it, why it is so important. But if you don't have the glass lid, it's okay to use the solid lid too. You will, you will learn how to judge on your own if the water starts boiling in it or not. Okay, the next one is, I have, um, Glenn, look here. The, we have the, um, one third cup of turnip. So please see, I, you can cut it any way you want. So you don't have to do it exactly how I do it, but so this is this way. And I'm going to arrange it in this pan. Let me see if this will be visible a little bit. Oh, now I can see it. Okay. Now I will keep adding and arranging around because everything goes in layers here. Uh, so we have parsnips. I love using parsnips. So these parsnips I just chopped in small pieces like, like this. You are welcome to chop it whatever size you want. But uh, parsnips add a wonderful flavor to, to the dishes and they are on a, a little sweet side. shiitake mushrooms, so you can use fresh shiitake mushrooms. I, I slice them, or if you have dry, so, so you have to reconstitute them in the water and then you will chop them. So I use here 
a sliced shiitake mushrooms, four. They are small. The next Why? layer, I'm sorry. Oh. Why are mushrooms so good for us? <laughs> the uh, mushrooms are uh, the, the mushrooms are high in vitamin D. They protect from cancers. They boost the immune system, and some of the mushrooms also thin the blood. So, in the case like of shiitake mushrooms, if somebody is already on the blood thinners, please be careful. Don't overuse the mushrooms that have the pro uh, properties of thinning the blood. Uh, they are excellent for people who actually struggle with the cholesterol because and and because the mushrooms really uh, help with it. So the next one I have here uh, sweet potatoes. One sweet potato in this bowl. So it's about a, the equivalent of one cup. And again, I cut it like this, but you can cut it however you want. And I'm putting it on the top. Let me show you now. So I have so far this. Yeah, I know, I don't want to spill. Um, so then we add, we have two things more to add. We have lima beans and lima beans have the alkalizing effect on the body among with the monk beans. So that's good to use, especially if somebody is struggling with the acidity. So this is the equivalent, how much of, of that we have. Um, half a cup of pre-cooked. You have to cook the lima beans before. So half a cup of pre-cooked lima beans. And again, they will be organized like this. And then in the recipe, okay, I said five um, cut in half Brussels sprouts. So I'm dropping them on the top here. We have, I think one more thing to add, which is cauliflower and the cauliflower you know, you can use one third cup, you can use half a cup, or you can use more than that. So I have this amount, it's about a cup. And I'm dropping it on the top. Now, that's how everything looks in this pan. And oh, and we also have, it's optional, goji berries. So I just scatter them around. And now this is how the dish looks. Looks delicious. Layer by layer, and now I'm covering it and we will start the cooking process. So I am putting this pan on the top of that stove uh, timer and I'm putting the glass lid on the top. What I want to start first, I'm going to put the flame on high and for the next few minutes I will watch when I see through this glass lid that the water starts boiling, then I will, I will lower it to low. You want me to watch? Yes, you will watch. So it's 7.16, about two, three minutes, we probably will need to lower this temperature. Right, the second pot I have to show you now, it will be that kabocha squash soup. And I'm going to bring it closer. So in this pot, I have chunks of kabocha squash. So, you know, the, in the macrobiotic cuisine, often the skin from the kabocha squash is used. And I wanted to show you, this is a beautiful skin. Wherever the skin has the blemishes, that's when I cut it out. So you can see where it was cut out. And 
and there are, this is the equivalent of four cups of kabocha squash chopped. And there is the piece of kombu seaweed and it's, it expanded when it's soaked in the water. And I'm going to cook it with this kombu seaweed for the first 10, 15 minutes. And then I'm going to remove that seaweed because it would be too strong for this type of soup. And so I will set it on the flame now, just partially covered. And I want to show you the seaweed that I use. Again, I start first a little bit higher and then I will adjust it. Oh. That's not this one here. So you will be watching this one too. Okay. Yes. So with I, I'll show you now the seaweed. I I have this one. So you will know how that how this looks. So combo. These are those kind of dry pieces. And you have to examine them so that there is no somewhere a tiny piece of shell attached. And then you just simply break it like this. About this size or less. And that's how you, and you soak it for, a, for let's say 10 minutes before you start in the same water before you start cooking. So um, now I wanted to show you something interesting here. Shiso leaf. I have the shiso plant. This is how the leaves look. In the um, Japanese cuisine, shiso leaves are very important. They are very healthy. They have antibacterial properties. They can be used when, there is the, when somebody has the cough or co for symptoms of cough or cold. And um, it has a wonderful flavor. So that's, there are two types. One, it's reddish. That's the one that I have. I'll put it closer. So I'm going to chop it at the end and it will be used as a garnish for this main dish. They're so pretty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and you can, in the warm climate, you can have it all, all the year. You can grow it in a pot. And I also... Um, can I ask AJ a question? Yes, please. AJ? Uh, do you know where a sous chef can get cufflinks for these things? <laughs> I think, Glenn, I think the coat is a little bit big for you, I think is what the problem is. I ordered a medium, and I was a medium before I went on the low-fat vegan diet, so I don't know what happened. Yeah. You, you know what, I think, is it immense? Because I think, you know, chef coats tend to run a bit big. Oh, is that it? Okay. So I would take from you, but I think that might be too big for me, too. Okay. It's I love it. Sorry, I wanted to tell you one more thing about the shiso leaf. I learned that shiso is important for allergies because there are compounds in shiso leaves that reduce the production of a protein that causes certain immune cells to overreact when they encounter the allergens. So- Honey, this is starting to boil. Okay, okay. How much? so it was about three minutes when it starts boiling. So now under the main dish, I am lowering the flame just too low. And this one, no, this one will take some time. So this one, let's put it higher, you watch it. I wanted to show you the next thing. Um, let me see here. You have the prettiest cookware. It looks like it's brand new. Well. That's because I wash it. <laughs> Part of my sous chef duties. Well, I, I will show you two things now. First one, it's the miso uh, tahini dressing that will be used to drizzle the main dish. It's going to be, a, the dish will really look at the end very fancy. So in this miso tahini dressing, there are three tablespoons of tahini one teaspoon of sweet white miso. Now I wanted to tell you something about the miso. There are different types of miso, like uh, for example, red miso. But this type is just, it has a skyrocketing amount of sodium. So the sweet white miso has the lowest amount of sodium. 
And there is another one, the chickpea miso also, that is low in sodium. So I tend to stay just with these two types. And the white miso comes also as mellow, but that one then is higher in sodium than the sweet white miso. So one teaspoon of the sweet white miso, three, ta three tablespoons tahini, one third cup of water that I used, and two tablespoons freshly squeezed lemon juice, and, and then all of it was mixed. And I just used only three, four tablespoons of that mixture. I transferred it to this one and I added here one tablespoon of fresh chopped basil. And this is going to be very gently warmed up on the stove on, the, on another um, stove tamer. So stove tamer, I'll just sit this, put this one sitting on the stove tamer. Underneath there will be just a very low temperature on a tiny burner and I'll make sure that it doesn't burn, it doesn't boil, it just should be warm, warmed up to, for a minute or so. And that's it. And that's what I will do in a moment. Um, here, another thing that I wanted to show you, that's for later, an herbal tea. So it's the beginning of this tea. There are three cups of water and, two, and seven cinnamon sticks. You can see cinnamon sticks inside, right? So the boiling water was poured over the cinnamon sticks and this is sitting on the, on the stove. Um, let me show you this kind of thing. So the glass uh, pot doesn't burn. On this kind of, can you see this? Maybe here, yeah, on this kind of thing. And then it sits on the stove. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to it the um, peels, the uh, peeled apple skin that is dried up. It's so aromatic. So I have it here. Another plate. Okay. So this is from the apples the, that I dried up the skin from the apples and, and it is, you know, so fragrant and it will give the nice flavor to the tea. And I'm going to add it to that pot. Now that pot is already steeping, sitting on the very tiny flame for an hour. And it already has some, um, some color in it. It just needs to steep for, a, for about, I would say two, three hours, and it will be so sweet, nicely sweet from the cinnamon. It's like a dessert. So I'm going to add to it now the, the apple um, skin. Okay. Now we need to use the spoon. Len, do you guys have Whole Foods in Indiana? Sorry, AJ, I didn't hear you. Oh, do you guys have Whole Foods where you live in Indiana? Well, Whole Foods is in Indianapolis, so we have to drive there. But we have here two locations of the co-op. And, uh, and then the other type of uh, grocery stores, like something similar to what's in California, Sprouts or Henry's, former, yeah. But we need to go to Whole Foods to pick up certain items that we can find here. So now you can see this has the peels inside and it will be steeping further more. It's a nice dessert thing then. Okay, now let's see how the soup is doing. So watch this please. And I have to check on this one. Um, maybe I'll move this stove so the way. Now I'm going to make the mango smoothie. Um, the mango, oh, I don't need to put this so we won't forget for this dish. Also, I wanted to show you, I blanched earlier the leafy greens for the main dish, and this is going to go on the top. So five ounce box, like the, let, let me show you the box. 
So this size box, okay, will yield this amount of the blanched leafy greens. And they are just blanched for a few minutes, that's all. And they will go on the top of the dish. Um, so now I'm going to make the mango smoothie. And with the mango smoothie, you can make it really very basic. I gave you the recipe that um, mango, mango lassi, I should say. I love mango lassi, but you know, in the Indian restaurants, you can't have it vegan. So I created my own. And so this mango lassi uh, will have two mangoes. I peel and flesh and, and cut that flesh. Um, I use two table flax, uh, flax seeds in it and between one and one and a half cup of unsweetened almond milk and i use the unsweetened almond milk but the plain one because i don't want any vanilla flavor that would take away the flavor of mangoes so that that's the key and then i often make it just with those three ingredients sometimes if you want it more decadent you could add one date to it and you could use also one quarter teaspoon of ground cardamom, but you don't have to. So today I will only use those three ingredients, which is mango, almond milk, and flax seeds. That's all. So let me set it. You can turn it now. Glenn, what's your favorite recipe? Oh, oh okay. Okay. Here is. Uh... I'm being, I'm playing cameraman now. Glenn, well, everyone likes Joanna's sweater. Oh, uh, no, no comments about this. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite recipe of what she makes? Well, I like everything she makes, but um, she makes a great shepherd's pie. She makes a great um, uh, mushroom soup. She makes a, and I love any rice dish with beans and vegetables and um, uh, what else? Any, anything with potatoes I love. So that's the amount of the mangoes, from two mangoes. Two tablespoons of flax seeds. And you ground them, right? No, whole flax seeds, but they will, you know, in the blender on the high power, they are going to be uh, ground. Okay. And then let me measure exactly. While well, she's measuring, I should say that um, in the book, we tell the story of how Joanna overcame the symptoms of lupus. Um, and flax seeds were one thing that really helped. Um, uh, flax seeds, I guess, are, are soothing to the, uh, to the digestive tract. And a lot of, or really all, I think, uh, inflammatory diseases are caught, start with the intestinal tract. They help, flax seeds help with healing the lining. Okay, so I just put about one cup of, the, of that almond milk and we will see how thick it will be. I'm sorry for the noise. Thank you. 
it is thick. So if you, if you like it um, a little bit more liquidy, you can get the remaining, you can add the remaining amount of the almond milk. So this one had one cup of almond milk. So let's, let's add it here. Is it good? Yeah. Is it good? I love it. Yeah. It's almost like drinking a, a pudding. It's very thick. Uh, you can't go wrong with mango. No. It could be like ice cream. Almost. Yes. So um, in the book, when we talked about Joanna's overcoming lupus, one thing was the flax seeds. Another thing was uh, using probiotics were very helpful to her. Um, and an another thing was she needed to follow a lot of macrobiotic principles. Um, now, I'm, I know that Dr. Brooke Goldner, uh, and we consulted with Dr. Goldner, she overcame her lupus with a lot of uh, raw, raw, vet raw kale smoothies, things like that. That didn't work for Joanna. She needed to have her steam, her greens uh, blanched. Uh, but the blanched greens really helped a lot and the flax seeds, the probiotics, um, and uh, what else? Well, there were different herbs that I would take. There were so many different approaches, but what I learned is that what works for one person, it not necessarily it is going to work for another person. Everybody is unique, different, and you just have to um, uh, figure out and uh, and experiment what is going to work for you what won't work for you i i had to uh, try different probiotics i i even at some point would make my own fermented uh, vegetables and fermented fruits i would buy very high quality um, uh, vegan uh, cultures for making fermented vegetables and i would use that and would make our own fermented vegetables really delicious using some seasonings in them too uh, and herbs. And um, I remember I fermented blueberries and I fermented apples. They were so delicious with, I used Indian spices, Indian seasonings in, uh, um, in fermenting apples, fermented peaches I made too. Um, what else? Uh, at some point, at the worst, lowest point that I experienced, I couldn't even eat raw fruits. And I had to have even my fruits um, steamed. I couldn't have anything raw. I just had to uh, slowly work on rebuilding the entire digestive system. Doctors told me that my entire digestive system was attacked by lupus. And so I had to start um, with a diet like for a baby. And it took really about two years um, of that kind of approach, slowly, gradually, until I would feel the difference. Um, so you have to be very patient with it. You can't give up so easily. It takes time. Let me check now um, what's happening here. And I'll say that the last time Joanna had her blood work done, there was no sign of, uh, of an autoimmune condition. Um, so we don't like to use the word cured because we know that if she, if she does things wrong, it could flare up again. But she's living pain-free now. So 
it's yeah. good. Well, you can't cure the autoimmune diseases. You just put them to sleep, put them in the, into the dormant stage. And, and it can be dormant for the rest of your life. And if it starts flaring up, you will know what to do because you already have the experience with it. Um, and, and what I, I was thankful to my rheumatologist back in Los Angeles who honestly um, agreed with us he, that you know the pharmaceutical drugs are not going to cure it. They could help only with maintaining the symptoms, but at the same time, some organs can get damaged from uh, pharmaceutical drugs. What they had to offer for me was only the chemotherapy, anti-malarial drugs, and steroids. And, and I said, thank you. Um, I had a neighbor who had lupus and she was on these kind of drugs. So her immune system was actually uh, damaged by these drugs to the point that, you know, she couldn't fight the infections. And then um, she tried to take a very good care of herself. But when she was in the gym, I think once, she somewhere got that uh, infection, staphylococcus on the skin. She got this rash that didn't go away for a few years. Doctors were treating it, but it didn't go away. And then it got into her bloodstream and she got sepsis. Her whole body was attacked. And for a month she was, she was suffering horribly. She was in a hospital connected to all kinds of machines and she died. And when I learned about it, I said to myself, that was before I was diagnosed with lupus. You know, I said to myself at that time, if I ever have anything threatening, any threatening disease, the doctors would want to use these kinds of drugs, I will never take them. And I remember I told this story to this young rheumatologist uh, who, whom we went, we were recommended. And, um, and he agreed. He said that these drugs are not going to cure me. They will just, they may help in maintaining the symptoms. But, but I, I told him that I want to try the other way. And he was very curious and very supportive. And he really wanted to see if I succeed. It was nice to be in the hands of a doctor who was not pushy and who wasn't of, uh, getting offended that you didn't want to um, you know, follow the uh, main path into a possible healing, maybe conventional medicine, conventional medicine right? Well, so, that's all they know, you know, it's a, you know, that's really all they've learned. Yeah, that's right. So, let's see. All right, I'm okay, moving the camera. So this dish, probably in about 10 minutes, will be ready. The soup, let me just check the soup now. So the kabocha squash soup is ready, and I'm going to turn the stove off and it needs to cool off. So after it, it has just a, you know, uh, it's warm, but not terribly hot, I will transfer it to the blender and mix it in the blender until creamy, nice creamy. And when I serve it in the bowls, I'm going to garnish it either with the chopped scallions or chopped parsley, uh, not parsley, I'm sorry, chopped basil. Well, you can use parsley if you want. So I, I like using fresh herbs. So that would be the, the, the very basic dish, kabocha squash soup. Only two ingredients that were used. And it's wonderful. It's sweet. I wanted to show you there is another type that I make in the similar way like kabocha squash, my favorite also, curry squash. And it is similar. It's very sweet. So you can make it in a similar way like the kabocha. So that's, that's the thing. And, um, and I wanted to show you how, let's say on the kabocha you could have, you could have some of these blemishes. So you need to just remove them, cut them out, scrape them off. 
and the skin, if you are going to use that skin like I use, it needs to be scrapped with a very hard brush under the hot, hot water, scrubbed very well, and then you remove the blemishes. You cut it, remove the, the seeds from the inside, and um, that's how it goes. Don't okay. you find the mocha squash a little difficult to cut? Uh, yes, but, uh, but you know, I, I found the way how, you know, I do it. The, the, the key to it is first, you know, to cut with a knife, to have an, a good knife that you cut this thing around and you press with your finger and it comes off. And then underneath the same, same thing. So, and, and then you just go and from the inside, you start cutting it with a, with a good knife, but you have to be careful, yeah. So when I, when I get a big kabocha squash, that, that's a challenge. So I prefer finding them, you know, small to medium. <laughs> okay, the next, let's see. I'm, I'm going to now warm up gently on a little, um, on a little uh, burner. I will warm up this dressing with the, uh, with the basil. So as I do so, Glenn, as, your, as a sous chef, yes. please entertain oh. the, all the guests. Okay, um, as sous chef, one of my responsibilities is to keep the show going. So AJ, what would you like to ask me about being a sous chef? Oh. Let's see, is this your first time? Uh, well, I, I applied for several jobs as a sous chef, but I was never hired. I, I was offered jobs in dishwashing and I've done that in Howard Johnson's and uh, once in a vegetarian restaurant in San Francisco. I, I have done dishwashing professionally. I know it. Where did you guys meet? We met in Calgary at a party. Joanna was living in Calgary and I was up there on a kind of business vacation and we met at a party. And then we started um, um, writing letters to each other. It was, it was kind of a little bit before email. So we, we actually had letters in envelopes. Remember those? Yeah. It was an epistolary romance. We sent each other letters. And, and you know, I can't imagine today that it's, it's as good with emails. You know, I mean, it's quicker, but it was more romantic with letters. Did you sweep her away with your scintillating sense of humor? I don't think so. <laughs> I think it was more my sous chef outfit, which I wore on our first date. So what do you, what's your next book? You know, I'm thinking of doing own your health case studies. People who have, like Joanna, overcome their um, diagnoses by taking their health into their own hands. That's a great idea. What if you took every letter of the alphabet a different disease and do one case study for each of the diseases? That would give me 26 case studies. Wouldn't that be interesting? Because there is a disease that starts with every letter because Dr. Greger has mentioned that and you could find somebody that reversed that disease. Wouldn't that be kind of, you know, own your health from A to Z? Well, um, what is the disease that starts with a Z? Well, I don't know, but I know Dr. Greger does because he once listed it for me. Uh, so. I don't know what disease it is, but it's probably a zoonotic one. Could be. Z herpes zoster? Maybe zoster? I don't know. <laughs> what, what would start with an X? That's an, that's an even bigger question. Yeah. Um, oh, you have uh, an update on the main dish, it's honey? It's almost cooked. Okay, the what? main dish is almost cooked, and I think it's what we're having for dinner. Do you use anything like a, a pressure cooker or an air fryer in Indiana? Are those allowed? <coughs> they, are, <coughs> they are allowed, but we don't have them. We no, should get we one. don't. So we, we need to try that. Yeah. In fact, if somebody here um, 
uh, was recommending the, the air fryer. He was very happy with the air fryer. But this system Joanna has of making the whole dinner in one pan is very effective because for one thing, there's only one pan to clean afterwards. Um, but you drop everything, you can make so many different versions of, of this dish, all kinds of vegetables. And then, um, you know, you put everything in the pot, you just have to watch it for the first few minutes till the water starts coming to the boil, then you adjust it to, to the lower flame and make sure from time to time that everything goes well. And then after the water evaporates, you see through this glass lid or, you know, when you monitor how, time, how much time it needs to cook, then it's ready. You remove it from the flame and let it sit covered for a few more minutes and then you serve. Now, there are so many different types, varieties of the rice and every variety requires a different amount of cooking. And, um, you know, I read that there are over 90,000 samples of cultivated rice and wild species that are stored at the International Rice Gene Bank. Can you imagine? Wow, and I only eat about three, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, we have the access to the brown, black, red rice. Um, I avoid the white rice. Um, once in a while, I could have the white, like white jasmine rice, it cooks fast, but uh, in general, I, I avoid it. I mainly focus on the other varieties of the rice. And uh, in, with so many varieties in, in, on the other continents, you know, I wish we could try <laughs> more. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to remove it now from the flame. Still, still it is covered. I'm not uncovering this dish. It has to be covered. And how's the soup? And the soup is already cooked. It's just sitting, it has to cool off. So it's too hot to put it to the blender, but everybody knows when the soup just cools off a little bit, then you put it to the blender and, and, um, and blend it in the blender. If you don't want to put it in the blender, I sometimes use the potato masher and I mash in the pot all those chunks and then, and then serve it like this. And That's a great on top. Uh, I'm sorry, AJ was saying something. Oh, I was going to say just it's a great idea. And also the fact that there's so few ingredients in the soup, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, so it's fast. And uh, same thing you can do with the, with the butternut squash too. And so what's the garnish for the soup? For the soup, either the chopped scallions or chopped basil or chopped parsley. Yeah. Or whatever you would like. Hey, Glenn, uh, Sherry wants to know how long you guys have been married. And I want to know what's an epistolary romance. I don't know that word. That, that's a romance with, through the letters, through the mail. Oh, kind of like so, people in prison. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, you know, there's no word, I don't think, for email, email-alary romance. You know, it's just not as good. Wow. It's, a, it's a lost art. So uh, what was, oh, how long have we been married? 24 years and 25 years is coming up next September and the 25th anniversary is what um, form? Silver. Silver? Yep. Silver. I just had mine. Yep. How did okay. you propose? Did you propose by a letter? I got, I was, I was uh, walking by a, um, a, a flea market in Los Angeles and I saw a booth with a, a little happy ring. It was a, you know, a little smiley happy, it was a plastic ring with a little smiley, happy, smiley face on it. And I thought, well, I don't, I don't know anything about rings. I never proposed before. And if I buy an expensive ring and it doesn't fit her, that wouldn't be good. So I'll get the little plastic smiley ring you know, kind of as a place setter, you know? And so I went up to Calgary 
and I propose. No, actually, no, actually, she came to see me in Miami, and I proposed, and I gave her, I offered her the little plastic smiley ring, and I think that's when she knew that she really had a class act on her hands, <laughs> and um, and she said yes. And ever since then, she's really had trouble making decisions. <laughs> okay, so are you going to serve now? Going to be serving now? So I'll show you. Oh, and I should say, she she never wears the plastic smiley ring. She keeps it in the safe deposit box. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that smiley face to fade off, you know, over time. Uh, it's just that smiley face that was painted, I think, and it, it, I keep it for the memory. How soon did you convince her to go vegan, Glenn? Um, it, it was uh, when I met her, she wasn't even vegetarian. Uh, she talked about it and she became vegetarian, I think a little before we got married. And- um, Let me show you again through this. So it's cooked. Now I will be serving and I'll show you- And I think for the first year or two, she occasionally ate cheese and then it just got less and less often and she went vegan. Wow. You know, you hear that. It seems like the cheese is the last for a lot of people to go. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And the other thing was, the, as, I, as I wrote about in the book, when she developed these symptoms of lupus, and for her, it took the form of uh, a lot of terrible joint pain throughout her body uh, and some swelling uh, on, on one wrist in particular. Um, she, she would say to me, it looks like the vegan diet isn't working for me. And that, you know, that made me feel terrible because I had convinced her to go on a vegan diet and now she was in terrible pain. Uh, what, do the truth, think, what, what do you think didn't work for her? I mean, well, I think it was because of the particular type of vegan diet we were on. We weren't at that point on a really healthy vegan diet. We were eating a lot of junk, some, junk. Some, some of the uh, eat, eat, food eat. we were eating satan. And, yes. and I don't know, we don't know if Joanna has, has celiac, she probably does not, but she has gluten sensitivity. And so the worst thing she could have had was the seitan. And she probably was eating more bread than she used to. Okay, here's so the So now I start putting it. So you see the main dish is in the middle and on the sides you have the radicchio and arugula. On the top of it, I'm going to put The blanched vegetables, the blanched, I'm sorry, leafy greens. So maybe on this one, it's better visible. You see in the middle. Wow, that's beautiful. And now I also, we get, let me show you, wait a second. Oh yes, the, I, I warmed up that, that miso, tahini miso dressing with the little basil leaves so I just drizzle on the side I'll show you in a moment okay so two spoon two teaspoons on on each and then then one more thing no two more things you so I'm looking for this so I'll try to show, when, when this is with the dressing. Let me show you this. It looks like something you get at Real Food Daily. Yes, it does, yeah. When, um, okay. We buy sometimes, when I don't have time to make the fermented vegetables, these are fermented vegetables. There is one like a plain cabbage, but this one has red cabbage. It has calendula flowers in it and some other vegetables in very low in sodium. So I use just, you know, a small amount of it on a fork that I just put on the top of it, uh, of this green, um, leafy greens, steamed leafy greens here. And, and I chopped the shiso leaf 
leaves which you, that you saw before. So I sprinkle them on the side, on the side of the dish a little bit. And that's how it looks. I wish I was able to move it more so you could see that creation. You know, if you take a picture of that, we can make it the thumbnail. That is beautiful. Okay. Okay. So we'll take a picture of that. And so that's the whole dish. And, and we have that kabocha squash soup that I'm going to put a little bit later in the blender. Oh, the tea. And the tea, the tea is steeping, still steeping. Let me see. Oh, what a wonderful smell. Cinnamon and apple scent from those apple um, peels. So when you peel the apple, dry the peels in the, I dry them in those paper bags like this. I'll show you, um, I, I discovered it accidentally. I use these bags, you know, and I put in a bag like this, the peels from the apple that I just peeled and close the bag and leave it. And, and the peels don't get spoiled. They just nicely dry up in the bag. That's so cool because, you know, when you buy those flavored teas, they often have a lot of artificial flavors or even they're called natural flavors, but they're not yeah. really all that natural. Yeah, whenever I see natural flavor, I just have no idea what it means. And um, I, it, it, the only research I've been able to do on it, it just seems like I'm suspicious of all those natural flavors. Mm -hmm. Me too. This, this is natural flavor. See, this is real natural flavor. So thank you so much, AJ, for having us on. Thank I, you, AJ. Thank you, Charles. Thank you guys for showing us how to make a delicious, it looks like a macrobiotic meal. Yes. Yeah, it is. And, and I thank everybody also for watching it. So uh, for having time to, to spend some time with us this evening. And thank you for the, your support of the book. AJ and I appreciate it. Absolutely, we sure do. And don't forget, guys, you can get a bunch of 25 bonus recipes from Joanna if you email us your receipt for the book by midnight on September 18th, which is this Sunday, to chefajbonus at yahoo.com. Uh, Jesse says, that was a wonderful meal. So nice to meet Joanna. Susan says, thank you. This is wonderful. Lots of nice comments in the chat that hopefully you guys can see. All right, so take care, you guys. Enjoy your dinner. Compliments on the sous chef outfit? <laughs> uh, you're hilarious. So guys, come back tomorrow at 11 when we have another wonderful cooking demo, demo from Chef Chris Kendall, who's going to be making Chris's creamy curry. Take care, my Indiana friends. Thank you. Thank Good you. Good night. Bye-bye.